Welcome back to the podcast where we ask the question, what makes you happy? My name is Jake Pearson and today we have with us a health trauma survivor, two bouts with cancer, several bouts with pulmonary embolisms. We've got David Stanley from Flint, Michigan. David, thank you so much. How are you? Jake, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, we were ta- as we were talking a few minutes before you hit record. Just there, there's so much interesting going on in your life down there in, in uh, Victoria and Australia. I'm, I'm excited to have this chance to chat with you for your viewers. Well, we we do appreciate you coming on from the other side of the world. And as much as I'd love to talk, because that's what I love to do today, it's all about you and what makes you happy. Could you start with a little bit about that? One of the key aspects, and I am, by the way, as a friend of mine put it, relentlessly optimistic. I I am really happy. And one of the reasons why, and this isn't true for everybody, but one of the reasons why is I've almost died. And not just once, but twice. And that moment when you realize that Everything changes and can change dramatically. We have no guarantees and not the conceptual, oh, I know I'm going to die. You know, my grandma's 87 and she's, you know, she's just passed away. Uh, You know, not that kind of thing. I mean, like you, Jake Pearson, you're going to die. Once you do that, then everything kind of shifts into focus because you realize that everything you do matters and you can create so much good in your corner of the world when you come from that, it seems like it might be a position of weakness to say, oh, I'm going to die. What's the point? No, no, no. That's exactly 180 degrees wrong. You're going to die. So this is the only life you get. Use it. Make a difference. Lift people up. You know, and when you do that, and and I know you know this because I watched a couple of your podcasts, when you need that boost of I'm having a down day, If you do something nice for somebody, if you practice an act of really conscious compassion for them, son of a gun, you feel better. I mean, there's a reason why in all those surveys, Nepal and Bhutan are the happiest countries in the world because they, as part of their faith as Buddhists, they are just honor bound to always practice acts of compassion. And it's, it's just incredibly liberating. And it's really powerful and it's creative because there's lots of different ways that you can do good things for other people. And it's, yes, a little selfish because when you do it for somebody else, you're doing it also because you're making yourself feel better. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you can own that right down to the ground. I'm doing this for this guy. I feel better. And he's going to have a better afternoon as a result. That homeless guy that I see outside of Aldi. Uh, that I always take the bottle of Gatorade and a couple bags of uh, of beef jerky too on my way out of the store. Yeah, I'm doing it a little bit because he's homeless and I wish I could solve his problem. I can't, but I can help him a little bit and he's going to have a better day. He's been recognized as a human face to face. You know, we take a couple minutes, we talk, you know, there's some human, genuine human interaction there between us and we now know each other. And again, I can't solve his problem. I'm not that wealthy. I mean, I can't give, I can't buy homes for people, but I can give him 20 minutes with this ice cold Gatorade and a little bit of genuine human interaction where I'm, somebody's focused on him and recognizes that he's a real person. It, it, it's, it's just an amazing event to be able to do that for somebody. I was just in awe of listening to you speak. Thank you for sharing what makes you happy, David. That was genuinely beautiful. And I really agree. A lot of people have on this podcast said that they found happiness and joy when they're compassionate and just kind and giving to other people. Even if it is a little selfish, it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to feel good after helping someone. You're not expected to feel bad or negative emotion. It's good to help other people. And I'm glad that that you find happiness in that too. What would you say to our, our listeners right now that are struggling to find a little bit of their own happiness in their lives? For me and for a lot of other people that I talk to about this issue, because I'm a I'm a blogger. I have a I have a pretty I mean I'm not a big influencer per se, but I'm I'm in touch with a lot of people because of the writing that I do. I think one of the key things that you have to do is you have to get you have to go out and use your body. There's that old biblical phrase that says beautifully and wonderfully and wondrously made. I have yet to see anybody feel worse about themselves after they go out and they play get their heart rate up use their body get some it doesn't i don't even like to say get some exercise because that seems for so many of us that had negative connotation i mean i love to work out i mean if you will find i tell all my friends do not text me message me whatever between 4 30 and 6 in the afternoon 
I will not respond because that's my that's my time. And whether you know whether you're out with a backpack and you're rucking, or you're on your bike, or you're at you know playing frisbee golf, I don't care what you're doing. When you get out there and you, especially outside, and you can suck some of that up, you're gonna be happy. And it lasts, and it's a very addictive feeling, that good feeling after exercise. I know you're a personal trainer, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I recommend that as like step one for nearly everybody. If you practice an act of compassion, use what you have been given. And if you if you are heavy, I don't care. You do not have to have 7% body fat to get outside, shoot a couple baskets, play a little netball, kick a soccer ball around with whoever. Just move around and feel how good we're good at this i mean we're people we're very good at moving i mean watch gymnastics right watch basketball whatever watch soccer or awesome i love aussie rules football you know get some get some fresh air get out there and play beautifully said and, and it's something that's really accessible to majority of of us living on this planet moving we do it naturally every day but instinctively making time to just go and actually use our body for nothing essential, but just to move and engage our endorphins, our chemicals in our body and move our muscles and stretch our body. It is one of the most underrated things that you can do for your happiness. And I really resonate with what you said there, David. So thank you so much for coming on the What Makes You Happy podcast to share all things your happiness. I'm at at dstan58 on Twitter if you want to if you want to connect with me and I will follow you back unless you're just an incredible moron. We will pop all those links for you to connect with David in the podcast episode description below so they can connect with you very easily because I know when you hear someone's username and then you keep listening and then you forget. So we'll make that accessible for you you guys listening at home. So David, hey, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat about your happiness with you. Thanks for listening to the podcast. We hope it gives you something to think about on your quest to discover what makes you happy. Make sure to check out whatmakesyouhappypodcast.com to connect with today's guest and follow us on all our social media platforms and to stay up to date at what's happening next and what makes you happy. Don't forget to share this episode with a friend and we'll see you next time.